Take me somewhere to warmer weather To something better than here I now Cause the days get longer The nights grow colder And lonely shoulder When you're not Welcome to Mulligans, the audiobook podcast. I'm your narrator and author, Charlie David, and I couldn't be more excited to bring you this chapter-by-chapter journey through a story that's deeply personal to me, and I hope will resonate with you too. This podcast is brought to you by Border to Border Entertainment, where we make love stories, whether they're beautiful, messy, magical, or sexy. I hope the recipe for your love story and mine include all those ingredients. Now, Mulligans might sound familiar to some of you. It's the first movie I ever wrote back in my early 20s. A few talented actors, including Dan Payne, Taya Gill, Caleb Worthy, Derek Bainham, Grace Vakovic, and Amy Maticio helped bring it to life on screen. And today, I'm thrilled to revisit this world chapter by chapter with you. For those diving into mulligans for the first time, here's what you can expect. It's a story about sexuality, family, and second chances. At its heart, mulligans asks some big, bold questions like, what happens when one person's confidence in their identity forces those around them to re-examine their own beliefs? Or, what does family really mean when life throws a curveball at the Davidson household? And most importantly, is it ever too late for a second chance? Each chapter of this audiobook will invite you deeper into the lives of Tyler, Chase, and the Davidson family. You'll laugh, you might cry, and you might just find yourself reflecting on your own second chances along the way. Before we jump into today's chapter, Make sure to subscribe to the Border to Border Entertainment YouTube channel so you never miss an episode. If you fall in love with this story, as I hope you will, you can grab your own copy of Mulligans in paperback, ebook, or audiobook form. And of course, revisit the movie. Links are in the show notes. And hey, let's make this a two-way conversation. Got thoughts on the chapter? Questions? Or just want to share your favorite moment? Drop a comment. I read every single one, and your insights make this journey even better. All right, it's time to dive in. This is Mulligans, where life gets messy, love gets complicated, and second chances just might save the day. Let's begin. Chapter 1 You can't blame people for who they are, Chase thought to himself as he leaned up against his best friend's car, a new silver Beamer convertible, but who keeps track of trivial things like that? The spring breeze licked its way through the hallway of trees lining the long driveway up to the residential halls of the university. The place was a zoo this morning as parents returned to pick up their sons and daughters for the summer. Chase winced just a little. He'd long ago gotten over the supposed trauma of being the only son of a single mom. That hardly made him a charity case in this day and age. More run-of-the-mill, actually. What upset him was the look on his friends' faces as they greeted their parents. A look of excitement, of anticipation of happy times, laughter, and memories to be made this summer. He'd seen the same look from his classmates every year through grade school, and it was no different now. He wanted to feel that wanted to manufacture it somehow, but he wasn't even sure where to start. The only part worse than the end of the school year was the beginning of another, when these same faces returned, nearly bursting the seams that held their heads from falling off balance from their ear-to-ear smiles as they competed to outdo each other with stories of their magical summers. He desperately wanted to feel something, anything for his own mother, but he just couldn't. There was nothing there. The closest emotional response he could intelligently identify would be sympathy, but it wasn't that strong. Apathy was much closer to the mark. Too many years spent watching her drink herself into a stupor. He couldn't blame her, or could he? No, he was past that. What does one do when the love of your life is killed and you're left with a runt kid to raise by yourself, 
Raise the kid, not another glass. Enough. Chase took a deep breath and rechecked the clock on the tall bell tower above the residence hall's front door. He could easily get lost for hours in the labyrinth of his mind and all the dark corners of his past. Not today. The sun was shining, college was out for the summer, and he and Tyler were going to spend it together. A smile played on his face. At last, something to look forward to. Tyler Davidson was, well, perfect, mostly, except for his habitual lateness. But even this minor fault, Chase readily could forgive. His best friend was everything he wasn't, or at least that's the way Chase saw it. Tall, blonde, blue-eyed, hunky Tyler. Always ready with a one-liner to make people laugh and seemingly able to glide through life without a care. Girls wanted to be with him, and guys wanted to be him. Somehow, he decided to lay down the unjust title of best buddy on Chase, a term that in Chase's mind only served to juxtapose them further. It wasn't that Chase wasn't handsome. He was more of an acquired taste with short dark hair and big almond eyes. And next to the roaring blaze that lit up a room when Tyler entered it, Chase felt like he was a single burning match, good to light a cigarette occasionally, but hardly something to gather around. He was obsessing again. It was a habit, not a particularly useful one either, just one he'd gotten in, well, the habit of. Chase closed his eyes and took a deep breath, enjoying the feel of the warm sun on his face. A summer to look forward to, he thought to himself. He had no idea what to expect. When Tyler asked Chase if he'd like to spend the summer with his family at their lake house, he'd just said yes. He hadn't thought about it in the moment. Since then, of course, he'd obsessed about it, imagining every detail. It sounded so exotic. Summer at the lake house. Definitely far from his alternative existence in his mother's city apartment. He'd actually been a little surprised by the offer. After all, they'd only met this year. Chase had transferred to the university on scholarship after working his ass off for the last two years at a subpar community college. He wouldn't have been able to afford the tuition otherwise. But fate had smiled on him when he submitted his art portfolio and was invited to attend gratis. Fate had indeed smiled on Chase again when he and Tyler were assigned to share a dorm together. The two had hit it off immediately, but Chase was still at a loss as to what exactly it was that Tyler saw in him. After all, Tyler could choose to spend his time with anyone he'd like. There was all but a line outside the dorm room every day. But Tyler had chosen him. He didn't need to understand why, he could just enjoy it. A summer to look forward to, there it was, a feeling growing inside him. Not manufactured, real. He couldn't name it yet, but it was there. He smiled and when he opened his eyes, he saw his best friend running down the front stairs of the university residence, a duffel bag swung over his shoulder. You ready? Tyler asked, beaming his megawatt smile at Chase and tossing the bag atop a pile of others in the back seat of the convertible. I'm sorry, that took longer than I expected. I'm ready now, for real. No worries, I didn't even notice the time, Chase answered as he hopped in the passenger seat. To summer. To us. To the lake house. Tyler revved the engine and pulled into the steady stream of cars exiting the campus. Sunlight danced through the hallway of trees lining the driveway of the residence building. So, I talked to Marty, the owner of the golf course, and we're all set up. We're green gophers for the summer. It's super easy. I did it the past couple years. Anyway, it'll be pocket money for us at school next year, right? Can always use that, Chase answered, feeling the ache of empty pockets in his jeans. Don't worry, I got you covered until payday if you need anything. Tyler said absentmindedly as he drummed his fingers on the steering wheel in time to the music on the radio. That, of course, was part of the problem. Tyler was always covering for Chase. Even with his tuition covered, he hadn't quite expected or planned for the additional expenses that sneak up at university. Beer, late-night pizza, weekend trips, concert tickets, and the list went on. And it was never a question. Tyler opened his wallet and magically everything was taken care of. Don't worry, you're going to be a famous artist one day, and then I'll be asking for free paintings for my house. I got you covered, Tyler would always say. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. Chase just wished there was somehow he could pay him back now or return the gesture somehow. It was much more than a gesture. 
Tyler looked out for him like a stray animal. No, better than that. He looked out for him like he really loved him. Could he use that word to describe it? He wasn't sure. He'd never used or heard the word before out loud. Well, not from another person to him, and he'd certainly never felt the words leave his lips spoken to another. I love football, I love painting, I love Rocky Road ice cream, but never I love you. He was thinking again, not quite obsessing, but certainly thinking, and he was supposed to be enjoying the drive with Tyler, who he realized was glancing at him, his face twisted into a question mark. You off in space again, Chastity? Tyler punched him in the arm for emphasis. I said, Albuquerque. Chastity. The nickname Tyler had laid on him since his side of the dorm room got less action than, well, it had gotten none. Tyler's side, on the other hand, was a regular gigolo's love fest with regular cuddling, whispered baby talk, and creaking mattress springs. Ends with an E. Ethiopia. Chase finally answered, smirking at Tyler. If there was one area Chase could run circles around his friend, it was with words. You and your A's, come on, give me a break. I love A's, Chase responded nonchalantly. I'll give you an A, asshole. Tyler shot him a playful look over his sunglasses. Come on, at least try. I can think of like three places that start with A right now. Hold on, America. Tyler exclaimed and shot one fist into the air, as if he had just won the lottery. It was this exuberant excitement for the trivial moments in life that made him all the more magnetic to be around. Which one? Chase asked flatly. America, America. North or South? You have to be specific, which means naming either North or South, neither of which begins with an A, Chase explained. Tyler stared out at the highway for a while, the yellow line stretching out in an endless ribbon over the horizon. He finally answered with a single word. Alamo. What? The Alamo, Tyler said again, adding the for clarification. Chase shook his head. Historical monuments and museums don't count. You just made that up, Chastity. Did not. Cities, states, countries, those are okay. No man-made structures, though, like you couldn't say Hoover Dam. Cities are man-made, Tyler interjected. Cities count. They're on maps, Chase explained. So if it's on a map, it counts? Usually. Usually? Fine. You know what? Use the Alamo. Whatever, Chase conceded. Fine, I will. Fine. You have an O, Tyler said, chuffed with himself for winning the battle. Hmm. Omaha. Does that end with an A? Yeah. Chase punched Tyler in the arm. Ow! Tyler whined. Nope, that doesn't start with an A either. He punched him again. Charlie horse! Tyler cried out. Nope, that's a C. Chase shot him another fist in the bicep. Do you want me to pull over right now and kick your ass? Tyler threatened. I'll do it. As the silver beamer traced the double yellow lines over the horizon, one thing was certain. Chase wasn't obsessing. He wasn't lost in memories of the past, plans for the future, or questioning who he was. He was simply there, with his best friend playing a childish game. And there was nowhere else he'd rather be. And that's a wrap on this chapter of Mulligans. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and that it got you thinking about the complex relationships we all navigate. The ones that challenge us, change us, and ultimately shape who we become. If this chapter spoke to you, or if you're reflecting on the big questions of love, family, or second chances, I'd love to hear from you. Drop a comment below or hit me up on social. Whether you're pondering Tyler's journey, Chase's emerging sexuality, Nathan's dilemma, or Stacy's challenges, or just want to share your own thoughts, I'm here for it all. Don't forget, if you're craving more, you can grab your very own copy of Mulligans. The paperback, ebook, and audiobook are available with links in the show notes. And if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button so you won't miss the next chapter. Trust me, things are about to get even more interesting, and I can't wait to share it with you. Until next time, remember, second chances are just around the corner, and love can always find a way no matter how messy it gets. Keep dreaming big and loving boldly. Thanks for listening, and I'll catch you 
in the next chapter of Mulligans. Take me somewhere to warmer weather to something better than here right now Cause the days get longer, the nights grow colder and lonely shoulder when you're not a Tell me, do you want me right now? I don't wanna wait to find out I need you to let me light out tonight Will you let me to the sun?